So we're filming at the Goshen set in, in Utah that's owned by the church. This is the same set where they filmed the Bible videos. We're really honored to be here. It's a beautiful set and I think worthy of the type of video we're trying to produce celebrating the birth of, of the Savior. Okay, cut. Good job, guys. Good job. We're going to reset. Feel good. The question that I had maybe others had from the beginning is why did we need to create another version of the nativity. But the more we fleshed it out, the more that we saw the opportunity to explore some of the history and some of the context of the time in ways that we haven't seen before. Sometimes this story is told with a certain amount of pageantry and formality that uh, I think in this production we're trying to get at the reality that these were real flesh and blood people that were living their real lives in a real place and that this event actually happened. That's become really important for me, these two people, Mary and Joseph, and see them as real people experience something extraordinary. Details that we have just a single line about in Luke 2 or in Matthew that felt like could be more than what's been represented on film up to this point. I think The Christ Child got as close to first century reality as any film that I've ever seen. It's really a massive undertaking, but it's worth the, the effort because of the story we're telling. I mean, there's nothing that's been of more importance to the world than this gift that we celebrate at Christmas. Mary's lullaby wasn't in the original script. It was something that actually came up during the filming process. Mary's lullaby was one of those things where sometimes you get on, on set and something happens or an idea comes or inspiration and guidance comes. We were in the middle of filming and one of our scholars was on set and having a discussion with some, with some other people about Mary. That she was really knowledgeable in the scriptures and knew the Old Testament. In Luke 1, the King James Version says that Mary said as she uttered the Magnificat, but the actual translation is that Mary sang. So the idea just popped up. She should sing. Why don't we have her sing it's like a mother would sing a lullaby to a baby? As we discussed with the historians, the song that she would have sang would likely have been a psalm. So the creative team went to the, the Bible and started going through psalms, trying to find something that would be appropriate. Looking at my iPad and turning to Psalm 27.1, which said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? It was a great scripture. It was in theme with what we were trying to do, the story that we were telling, with this light coming into the world. It felt very appropriate to the moment. And so we translated that into Hebrew. We went to the actress and told her that we had an idea. Unbeknownst to any of us, Brooklyn McDerris, who played Mary, was a professional singer. She's a wonderful singer. She was very open to the idea. She went through, looked at a bunch of Hebraistic music forms, and actually improvised the melody night when we came to shoot that scene it was the first time any of us heard what she had come up with and it was so sweet and so beautiful and so appropriate. What turned out to just be a spontaneous idea became I think a real emotional center point for the film. So Matthew chapter 2 actually doesn't give us a whole lot of detail about the wise men. It simply says that a group of people that it calls magoi come from the east. The Greek word magoi could be translated as magician or astrologer. It often is a word that's used to describe 
somebody who is a priest of another religion, of non-Jewish religion. The tradition that there are three wise men comes from the fact that they offer the baby Jesus three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But there's nothing in the story that tells us precisely how many wise men there were. When the wise men finally appear in Bethlehem, they are led somehow to the home in which Mary and Joseph are living. And we don't know how old the baby or the infant Jesus was, but once the wise men find this home and they come to the child Jesus and present their gifts, and then eventually they move on, when Herod finds out about the birth of this child, who some believe now is the Messiah, of course he issues a decree, and uh, the decree indicates that he has every child two years old and under slaughtered. And that slight hint right there has suggested to many scholars that Jesus could have been as old as two years old when Herod issued his decree. Daniel. We knew we wanted to tell a bigger story of the wise men and how they must have felt, you know, after however many years of waiting for this sign and seeing it and being committed to traveling who knows how far across their world to then what that experience would be to actually meet their savior face to face. I mean, all we have in the scripture is that they fell down and worshiped him. And you know, what, what does that really look like? When we're watching a film where we're trying to find characters that we relate to, that we connect with so that we can experience the story. And the wise man does that in this moment. We all kind of ask ourselves the same question. What would we do if we were in the same position? Would we be able to speak? What would we say? How would we act? Daz's performance really does call that out of us and makes us imagine, and makes us feel that moment together. The emotion was just all there. And the, just his feeling and everything coming together, he's seen this divine king, this Messiah, and all his dreams, all his expectations are wrapped up in this little uh, two-year-old boy. He'd been with King Herod, who was powerful. He was at the, you know, literally at the top of his game. And then the contrast between that earthly king and this young boy, wow. Must have been like that. We really wanted to give a gift to the world that testified that this happened to real people and that the Savior really was born in the world in fulfillment of ancient prophecy to come and bring light and ultimately bring salvation to the world. And that's what we hope this gift will bring. We hope that people will use this video to flood the world with the story of Jesus Christ. This has the potential of being a Christmas tradition every single year to talk about and show and remember the birth of the Savior Jesus Christ.